Gloves? You're giving me gloves? What for? I did not mean to sound ungrateful, it is just... Wait, these are Dalish, are they not? My mother was Dalish, and had a pair very similar to these. The leather was less thick, and it had more embroidery, but these are very close, and quite handsome. Do I seem surprised? Perhaps I am. Still, I appreciate the fact that you even thought of me. No one has simply given me a gift before. Thank you. What say you? By all means. I know little enough of the Dalish other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. And there, of course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. All this tale in the book. Is it? It seemed normal enough a tale growing up. No different than the other elven boys in the whorehouse. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. My first victim, as it were. We were all raised communally by the whores. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. I brought a good price, so I hear. It could have been much worse. Shall I tell you about what happened to the other whorehouse boys who did not fetch a decent price with the crows? Surely your life has not been so idyllic. People like you and I are not the product of happy lives of contentment, after all. My original point is that my mother's Dalish nature was always a point of fascination for me. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of Dalish make, I knew that much. Beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course, as we were not allowed such things. Eventually, they were discovered and I never saw them again. I don't feel anything about them. Oh, we heard about them in the city, even deep in Antiva. I even had the notion once to run off and join them. Naturally, the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy, staring at those gloves. But such is life. Come, enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. What say you? By all means. Well... The crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training, the sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. Within the crows, I did. But it has been something the crows have devoted a great deal of time to perfecting. An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth, and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? Thank you so much. For leading me to an errand, of course. You led me to an errand. You persisted, even though I was sure all you were going to find was a dead end. I will never be able to repay you for what you've done for me. Finding an errand allowed me to bring that chapter of my life to a close. I feel free. A great weight has been lifted off my heart. This moment, it feels like the moment before the sunrise, when all the world is still, holding its breath, waiting for first light. I can stop thinking about my past and look forward to the future. Thank you, my friend. You will always have my gratitude. What's on your mind? 
I will answer to the best of my ability. Mm, flowers? Uh, thank you. They're very pretty. These were her favorite. I haven't seen these in such a long time. They smell just like mother used to. Thank you. Thank you so much for remembering. I was just thinking about what happened to the elves, and I am reminded of a song sung to me many years ago. It was when my mother died, and this wise elven woman comforted me and told me that we shouldn't fear death or hate it. Death is just another beginning. One day, we must all shed our earthly bodies to allow our spirits to fly free. It's a beautiful sentiment, I think. One that brings peace and hope to the grieving. Do you remember our discussion? About Marjolaine and me, and my doubts about my path. I just wanted to tell you that I thought about what you told me, and you were right. Despite what Marjolaine says, I am not like her. I know that now. I found peace in knowing the Maker, and nothing will change that. I followed you to make the world a better place, and as long as I keep that in mind, I will not fall. Sometimes, it takes another to show us the truths we hide from ourselves. I'm glad I left Lothering in your company. You have proven a true friend and I thank the Maker for you. She's a lucky girl, Morrigan. That is not what I meant. She caught your eye. Though looking at her, it is not difficult to see why. Well, I want you to know I am happy for you. I know that look. You have something on your mind, don't you? Of course. 
Yes, a little better. Time heals all wounds, so they say. Scars remain, but they are just colors in the painting that is my life, no? I was just trying to say that our experiences shape our personalities. Mine made me who I am, and I'm sure it was the same for Marjolaine. I wish things had happened differently, but knowing her and knowing me, I don't think it could have. We had good times, though, and I look back on those fondly. Whatever happened after will never change the truth of the past. It's not so bad. Look, now I have new friends, a new family. In spite of it all, life, life is good. I know that look. You have something on your mind, don't you? Of course. There are many rumors about spies, or lesion, or otherwise. What are you referring to exactly? I admit I have done many despicable things in my lifetime. I do what I have to do. So do you. So does everybody. Sometimes we must do terrible things to get what we want. If it is any consolation, I always try to use non-violent means to achieve my ends. Some bards rely on torture to get what they want. It works effectively, as many will bend under the threat of bodily harm. But there are better ways, more subtle and kind. You will be surprised how easily a person will open up to you, even if all you offer is a listening ear. People respond eagerly to others who they believe understand them. They seek approval, friendship, sometimes love. This can be exploited. They never complained. Well, they did, but usually after they found out what I had done. Never during. Everyone can be seduced by the right woman. The trick is predicting who she is and becoming her. Master the game and no one can resist you. That is what they all say. I suppose we will never know, will we? I'm certainly not going to test you. Of course, of course. I was just speaking hypothetically. But come. It is getting late, and there is much to be done. I know that look. You have something on your mind, don't you? Of course. Mm, I have not given this a lot of thought. What will I do? We've traveled far and wide. Does it need to end? There's so much out there. Adventures to be had and stories to be told. I want to be part of it all. I might need some company. And you're not too irritating. You're welcome to come along if you like. It is settled then. You and I wandering the world, seeking our fortunes. I can't wait. There you are. Wanted to talk to you. I... Here we go. You and I, we've... You know how sometimes you spend time with people and things. Hmm. I, uh, what? Keep your hands where I can see them. Uh, sheesh. Can a man address a friend without getting all weird? I was just asking a favor. You had to go all that on me. I was thinking, uh, I do know some people out here on the surface. A person, actually. A girl I knew in Orzammar, before I left, obviously. And it'd be nice to talk to someone else who's been out here a while. Someone else from Orzammar. Her name's Felsey. She and I were uh, friends after Bronca left for the deep roads. I'm sure she's forgiven me by now. Thought maybe I'd track her down, see how she's been living. Oh, 
we coiled the old rope, if you know what I mean. Oiled the mine shaft. <laughs> Rubbed the foreman's elbow. <laughs> There was this thing she did with a tube of rendered nug fat. What? Stop looking at me like that. Anyway, she left for the surface a year back, and I haven't seen her since. What? Why are you asking me? I didn't do anything. Last I heard, she was going to live with her mother on the surface near some lake. <sighs> Clean, bad lake, was it? Yeah, I sawed it. I don't remember. No, no, I think it was clean bad. I remember because I thought, yeah, that's right. Dirty good, clean bad. <laughs> yeah. But thanks for offering to take us there. You're a good friend, Warden. No, uh, what was it you wanted to say? What about? All right. Aye, all right then. You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is... unexpected. You sound surprised. You must have heard this before. You'll get over it. Eventually. I have wondered that myself. It is one of the many things I find puzzling about your behavior. What is there to be puzzled by? I'm a simple creature. I like swords. I follow orders. There's nothing else to know about me. As I said, you're not as callow as I thought. In any case, we should go now. I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. I told you before that I was sent here. I was not sent alone. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. I heard the stories of Ostagar. Your kith stood their ground when others fled. No one can do more than that. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead, nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers, and my sword was gone from my hand. Perhaps. I searched for it, and when that failed I asked my rescuers what had become of it. They said they found me with nothing. I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. I know I cannot justify what I have done. My honor is forfeit. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Taventer, unarmed and alone, to bring my report to the Arashok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. Near Lake Callanhad. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. Your desire? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Possibly, if I had the desire to. I do not. I was told to accompany you and to help you, and that I shall. This may extend to the teaching of my mother's skills in time. For now, I simply do not know you well enough. I promise nothing. Your desire? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Possibly, if I had the desire to. It cannot Your be. Your desire? 
We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Discuss away. Dog is filthy. I... That may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Excellent. Yes. Indeed. Yes. Yes. Indeed. What are you doing in Haven? There's nothing for you here. What do you want? We do not appreciate lowlanders looking about our home as though it were some sort of zoo. The urn is nothing but a legend. I do not know who Brother Jenna TV is or what he says. However, I'm sure people can convince themselves of anything. No. You may trade for supplies at the shop if you wish. Then I suggest you and your companions leave. I suggest we tread carefully here. Something is amiss. Interesting strategy. Tell me. Do you intend to keep going north until it becomes south, and attack the Archdemon from the rear? The Archdemon is our goal, and we are heading away from it to find the charred remnants of a dead woman. I will not simply follow in your shadow as you run from battle. Then turn and fight. You keep the Darkspawn waiting. Tell us, tell us. Who are you? You shouldn't be here. Who? Why would you come here looking for someone? Lowlanders don't belong here. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Haven is Haven. But I have a secret. Do you want to see? Over by the mountain. It's lucky. I keep it with me. Don't tell anyone, all right? Who are you? You're not from Haven. We... We don't get very many visitors. How would you describe the place you know only as home? No. I've never heard that name. I don't have much, but I suppose you can take a look.
are you doing? That's private. We just don't listen, listen, do you? Ah! We are blessed beyond measure. We are chosen by the Holy and beloved to be her guardians. This sacred duty is given to us alone. Rejoice, my brethren, and prepare your hearts to receive her. Lift up your voices and despair not, for she will raise her faithful servants to glory when her... Ah, welcome. I heard we had a visitor wandering about the village. I trust you've enjoyed your time in Haven so far? This, my brothers, is what happens when you let an outsider into the village. They have no respect for our privacy. He will tell others of us if we let him. Word will spread, and then what? You, stranger, do not understand our ways. You would bring war to Haven in your ignorance. We've learned not to trust outsiders. What trust can there be when you barge into our homes with no regard for those that live there? We don't owe you any explanations for our actions. We have a sacred duty. Failure to protect her would be a greater sin. All will be forgiven. We <laughs> are Who are you? They... they've sent you to finish it. You don't know how glad I am to see someone who isn't from this village. I... Oh. The leg's not doing so well and... I can't feel my foot. I can set the leg and ease some of the pain, but he'll need a lot of rest in order to heal. I don't have time to rest now. I'm so close. The urn is just up that mountain. My research led me to Haven, and I have heard the villagers talking. I know the urn is here. Haven lies in the shadow of the mountain that holds the urn. There is an old temple there built to protect it. The door is always locked, but I know what the key is. Irik wears a medallion that opens the temple door. I've seen what he does with it. Yes, that is your key. Take me to the mountainside, and I will show you. All right. What is on your mind? <sighs> yes, of course. How could I forget? Irik said they were ambushed. Some killed, a few brought back to Haven to be questioned. He was so self-righteous about it, so smug. He seemed pleased that he had tortured and murdered these men. Good. Irik and his fellows were a blemish in the Maker's sight. If the Maker would even deign to look upon this world, that is. <sighs> Let's just talk about something else now, shall we? <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly what I expected it to be. I do not know. When the Chantry was established, it was decided that only female priests would ever be ordained. It is possible that the villagers, the disciples of Andraste, predate the Chantry and so have no knowledge of the Chantry's rules. They call themselves the Disciples of Andraste. They are very, very devoted. 
One could say fanatically so. They must be here to protect the urn, but they speak of Andraste as though... as though she were still alive. I thought so at first, but I'm not so sure anymore. Was there something else you wanted to discuss? They seemed intent on finding out personal information about me, where I grew up, things like that. How do you know? An imposter? What happened to the real Waylon? Oh, poor Waylon. I should never have dragged you into this. Make us take you into his hands, my boy. He believed in me, even when I lost faith in myself. I will honor his memory. Was there... Was there uh, something else you wanted to say? Ah, good. Help me up here. Uh, uh, I'll try not to slow us down. Here we are. Give me the medallion, and let's see if I remember. Yes, yes, you see, it, it can be manipulated, just like this. And there, a key to open the way. Now, where does this go? seen this hall in all its splendor, as it was meant to be. Still, sweep away the ice and the snow, and traces of beauty remain. I'm sorry, what? Uh, I was a little distracted, I apologize. These carvings were created just after Andraste's death, and they may reveal things about her life that we do not yet know. I think I need more time to study these statues and carvings. I could not keep up with you with my injuries. I should be safe. I don't think there are any villagers here. Go. I will be all right. Perhaps my destiny was only to lead you to the Urn. It was designed to protect the Urn from those who would steal it or do harm to it. Namely, the Taventer Imperium. I'm not sure. The legends were never very specific on that point. Only the faithful shall lay eyes on the sacred ashes. Death and misfortune await the unbeliever. The Maker's gaze has fallen on Andraste's final resting place. He weeps for his beloved, and his wrath at her betrayers endures. That is what the legend says, and the Maker may indeed watch this place. Read between the lines, however, and you'll understand that it is merely a simple truth draped in hyperbole and metaphor. After all, no one wants to hear Willie toiled for many a year to perfect the curious mechanisms that would send a sharpened spike up the arse of the unwary intruder. I think my decision to stay here was the best one, don't you? I'll be right here if you need me. Stop! You will go no further! You have defiled our temple. You have spilled the blood of the faithful and slaughtered our young. No more. You will tell me now, intruder, why you have done all this. Why have you come here? You did this all for an ancient relic. Know this, stranger. The prophet Andraste has overcome death itself and has returned to her faithful in a form more radiant than you can imagine. Not even the Tevinter Imperium could hope to slay her now. What hope do you have? You know nothing! Andraste revealed herself to us! We are her 
chosen! To arms, my brethren! And Jeste will grant us victory! Enemy ahead. What Holy ground, I can feel it. I bid you welcome, Pilgrim. You have come to honor Andraste, and you shall, if you prove yourself worthy. It is not my place to decide your worthiness. The gauntlet does that. If you are found worthy, you will see the urn and be allowed to take a small pinch of the ashes for yourself. If not...
The gauntlet tells the true pilgrims from the false. You will undergo four tests of faith, and we shall see how your soul fares. You will understand what it is when you face it. Before you go, there is something I must ask. I see that the path that led you here was not easy. There is suffering in your past. Your suffering, and the suffering of others. By the time you reached Chiani, she was broken, brutalized. You were too late. Tell me, Pilgrim. Did you fail, Shiani? Your path is laid out before me and plain to see. In the lines of your face and the scars on your heart. Do you believe you failed, Shiani? Thank you. That is all I wish to know. Accept your failings, but do not let them govern your life. You could not have known what would happen. You did what you thought was best. Parshera, leave the past where it falls. And what of those that follow you? Ask your question, Guardian. I am ready. You are ever the advisor, ready with a word of wisdom. Do you wonder? If you spout only platitudes, burned into your mind in the distant past, perhaps you are only a tool used to spread the word of the Circle and the Chantry. Does doubt ever chip away at your truths? You frame the statement in the form of a question, yet you already know our answers. There is no sense in hiding, is there? Yes, I do doubt at times. Only the fool is completely certain of himself. And you? Why do you say the Maker speaks to you, when all know that the Maker has left? He spoke only to Andraste. Do you believe yourself her equal? I never said that. I... In Orle, you were someone. In Lothering, you feared you would lose yourself become a drab sister, and disappear. When your brothers and sisters of the Cloister criticized you for what you professed, you were hurt, but you also reveled in it. It made you special. You enjoyed the attention, even if it was negative. You're saying that I made it up for... for the attention? I did not. I know what I believe. Demand whatever answers you want, spirit. You came to this land as an observer. But you killed a family in a blind rage. Have you failed your people by allowing a Quinari to be seen in that light? I have never denied that I failed. The way is open. Good luck, and may you find what you seek. Echoes from a shadow realm, whispers of things yet to come. Thought's strange sister dwells in night, is swept away by dawning light. Of what do I speak? A dream came upon me as my daughter slumbered beneath my heart. It told of her life, and of her betrayal and death. I am sorrow and regret. I am a mother weeping bitter tears for a daughter she could not save. The smallest lark could carry it, while a strong man might not. Of what do I speak? That is not of what I speak. Delighted, and so I shall. Ah! Good work. 
An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The debt of blood must be paid in full. Of what do I speak? Yes, my husband Hesarian would have chosen a quick death for Andraste. I made him swear that she would die publicly with her war leaders, that all would know the Imperium's strength. I am justice. I am vengeance. Blood can only be repaid in blood. I'd neither a guest nor a trespasser be. In this place I belong, that belongs also to me. Of what do I speak? It was my dream for the people to have a home of their own, where we would have no masters but ourselves. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, and thus we followed Andraste against the Imperium. But she was betrayed, and so were we. A poison of the soul, passion's cruel counterpart. From love she grows, till love lies slain. Of what do I speak? Yes, jealousy drove me to betrayal. I was the greatest general of the Alamoi, but beside her I was nothing. Hundreds fell before her on bended knee. They loved her, as did the Maker. I loved her too. But what man can compare with a god? The bones of the world stretched towards the sky's embrace, veiled in white, like a bride greeting her groom. Of what do I speak? Yes. I carried Andraste's ashes out of Tevinta into the mountains to the east, where she could gaze ever into her Maker's sky. No more fitting a tomb than this could we find. No man has seen it, but all men know it. Lighter than air. Sharper than any sword, comes from nothing, but will fell the strongest armies. Of what do I speak? That is not of what I speak. Delighted. She wields the broken sword, and separates true kings from tyrants. Of what do I speak? That is not of what I speak. Well, let's just deal with these ones and move on. The light is all right. No. Hey. Who else? It's good to see you, I suppose. Life out there has been good to you, hasn't it? You're respected even among humans. Do you remember us? Where you came from? And what some of us still face every day? Really? Thank you, but that will take time. More time than you can spare. What happened? It wasn't really your fault. You were caught in the situation just like the rest of us. You have a great task to complete. I want you to take this. I think you should have it. Seeing you now gives me hope. For all of us. Been through the trials of the gauntlet. You have walked the path of Andraste, and like her, you have been cleansed. 
You have proven yourself worthy, Pilgrim. Approach the sacred ashes. dreamed I would ever lay my eyes on the urn of sacred ashes. I... I, I... I have no words to express. I could not have asked for a greater honor than to be here. I will never forget this feeling. Congratulations. You found a waste bin. Welcome back. You were gone for quite some time. Well, did you find it? Is that? Oh, there's some dust on... No, that's not dust. Oh, Maker, I'm not worthy to look upon. What... what was it like, coming to the urn, I mean? Tests? Interesting. Very interesting. Perhaps my research will not seem so much like blasphemy to the Chantry now. We must organize an expedition. There is so much history here, it must be studied. And, and pilgrims should be allowed to come to the urn. But the urn belongs to all the faithful. How can you deny this to them? No, we must share it. I agree. We cannot withhold this from others. It is not our place. You have noble intentions, Brother Genitivi. But can you say the same of your brethren in the Chantry? Deny them a corpse? Unthinkable indeed. I will spread this good news or die trying. I must return home. I have much to do. If you ever find yourself in Denerim, please visit me. I am not a rich man, but I have a small collection of interesting artifacts, and I do owe you a reward for coming to my rescue. I hope to see you soon, my friend. The Archdemon saw us. Saw us! What does that mean? I think... Wait. Did you hear that? I guess it's like Duncan once said. We can sense them, and they can sense us. We'd best be more careful from now on. This camp isn't safe any longer. <laughs> what will they send next? Darkspawn tax collectors? Fortification should be built around the camp. <sighs> Can't get a bloody night's rest. How unnerving. It will be more difficult to sleep here now. What, no trap? No ambush? Huh. Some assassins. Mmm, that smell. This is Antheven leather, isn't it? I would know that anywhere. <laughs> I don't know how you found it, but thank you.
but I'm not finished admiring them yet. Can you smell that? Like rotting flesh. Just like back in Antiva City. Now if only you could find me a prostitute or two. A bowl of fish chowder and a corrupt politician. I'd really feel like I was home. <laughs> and the feet as well. Marvelous. And touched Andraste's ashes. They are the holiest thing on this earth. The remains of the Maker's Chosen. Maybe it is belief and faith that imbues them with their power. Or just maybe Andraste really was blessed by him. I do not know if I am worthy to look upon her. <laughs> Yes, of course, but it still is something to be in awe of. I know that look. You have something on your mind, don't you? What say you? 